We are peaceful travelers with guns and our own knives. The truth will never find its way to your TV. <laughs> Later this month, I plan to travel to, to Eretz Israel to study in Jerusalem. It's been too long since I've been there. And I don't care when the last time you've been to Israel, it's too long since you've been there too. I hope to see you in Yerushalayim, if not this summer, then hopefully in the future. Am Yisrael Chai. And now it's my privilege to introduce Devin Spear, who organized this event, and who is known as one of Phoenix's preeminent supporters of the State of Israel, of democracy, and it's my privilege to have him here, and I'm glad that you are all present to hear what he will have to say today. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Levinsky. Thank you for your speech. First of all, I just want to say how proud I am of the Israeli commandos who were told to jump onto this ship from a helicopter, as you all see in the video, with paintball guns into a mob of screaming anti-Semites. And they were given the order not to fire because that's what their commanders and the politicians thought was best. And whatever we think of that order, I am in awe. I am in awe of their self-discipline. I submit to you, there is no other soldier in the world, with due respect to the soldiers of the United States, there is no other soldier in the world that will take a beating and a stabbing with knives and pipes for 40 minutes and not react because that is what he felt was in the interest of his country. And I am pleased and surprised with the maturity of the Israeli government in this crisis this time. There's a coolness under fire that we haven't seen before. I watch Israeli satellite TV every night, and I can tell you that the Israeli government is not running out to explain themselves in apologetic tones. In fact, they're not explaining themselves at all in English. They're only giving press conferences in Hebrew. And they're only answering questions from reporters in Hebrew. And when one of the reporters asked, I think it was Foreign Minister Lieberman, why, he said, we need to be straight here, first of all, within ourselves. We, as the Jewish people, need to be on board, and that's the important thing. And that is the important thing. And the good news is that the people in Israel, in Israel at least, are on board. They get it. The Israelis are now protesting in front of the Turkish embassy in Tel Aviv. Israelis are down at the port of Ashdod showing support for their navy. My friend Avi just handed me this, which came from Israel. They're all wearing this. It says, Kulanu Shayetet Shlosh Israel, which means we are all the 13th Commando. Those are the guys who are on the ship. And our job here in the diaspora is to be little ambassadors for Israel. Their ambassador, Oren, has been doing a phenomenal job this time. Their spokesmen have been doing a great job. The fact that the press doesn't always want to print it is another story, but they've been making their case, and they've been making it clearly, and they've been making it unapologetically. And that's what we need to come out of this rally and do. Because Israel does not have to apologize for her existence. Israel does not have to apologize for their soldiers defending their lives against a mob of vicious anti-Semites. Israel does not have to apologize for blockading an enemy who seeks her destruction and declares themselves at war with her. And there are those who say, well, you can't stop uh, shipping in the, in, the, in the international waters, and that's the sin. But we did in the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the UN did in the Yugoslavian War, and the British did in the Falklands, and right now as we're standing here, American Coast Guards are boarding ships in the Caribbean looking for drugs in international waters, and Israel doesn't have to apologize for playing by the same rules as everybody else.
Israel does not have to apologize for surviving 100 years of Arab attempts at genocide against her. And let me make, and let me make clear, we're talking about genocide. When you saw on YouTube the mob getting on the ships and they were shouting, the army of Muhammad is on the way to slaughter the Jews. That's genocide. When they talk about uh, destroying Israel, they're talking about genocide against six million people. Just so we're clear on what the issue is. And beyond that, Israel does not take lessons in morality or in how to um, uh, prevent civilian casualties from the likes of Hamas, Al-Qaeda, the PLO, or Hezbollah. And Israel does not take lessons in civilian casualties from the Turks, perpetrators of genocide against one and a half million Armenians. So we can be proud of Israel's behavior, in this instance and in general. This is a small, struggling democracy in a sea of barbarism, whose behavior is exemplary, exemplary compared to any other nation in this situation. I challenge you to show an army with the self-restraint and a country with the self-restraint that the Israelis demonstrated. So our job, our job here in the diaspora is to defend her just cause and defend her honor. I don't want to keep you all long because it's going to get hot, but we have one more surprise speaker. This is Farley Weiss, who's uh, president of um, Young Israel in Phoenix and is another fellow lover of Israel. Here you are, Farley. Thank you, Devin. And again, uh, everyone show a great appreciation for Devin for leading and putting this rally together. It's a tremendous thing. The, um, after 9-11, President Bush made a couple of very important announcements. He said that if you give safe harbor to terrorists, it's the same as being a terrorist supporting nation, and that you're either with us or against us. Hamas is against us. Israel is with us. And what you see is, is that there's a famous quote in the Talmud. It says, he who is merciful to the cruel is destined to become cruel to the merciful. Should we be worried about people who are firing missiles and, and, and killing a four-year-old four -year in preschool, an Israeli child? Was the UN concerned about that? Did the UN make condemnations of that? When 7,000 missiles have been shot at Israeli civilians intentionally trying to kill civilians, were there any UN resolutions? There's a hypocrisy of the world that has gone on, that is going on right now, in which Israel, trying to defend itself against people, as Devin said, for going after their annihilation, is condemned. And those who are trying to, to, to destroy Israel are supported. That needs to end now. We are fortunate that in Arizona we have two tremendous senators, and Senator Kyle and Senator McCain, who have spoken up and said that what Israel did in going into international waters to stop people from trying to bring in weapons, because what are they, what are they worried about? If they're bringing in food, Israel said, we'll deliver the food to them. It was weapons, it was terrorists, it was people, terrorists were on the ships. Everyone in a world against terrorists, when terrorists are trying to destroy the world, of course you have a right to stop terrorists from bringing it, coming into your thing. I'm stop terrorists from coming to your neighbors and shooting missiles at you and bringing armaments to them and smuggling weapons to them. Of course you have a right to do this. It's so basic, so common sense. And yet the world is condemning Israel. You have a situation in which Helen Thomas, the uh, <laughs> Helen Thomas, uh, out there as a number one White House reporter, um, she hasn't lost her job yet. She can say that Israel should be destroyed, the Jews should go somewhere else. And where, 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 what is happening? People can say whatever they want against the Jews and nothing happens. And yet Israel does things in self-defense, Jews do things in self-defense and they're condemned. That needs to change now. Amen. 
It's an amazing thing that to stand up for what is right, what is common sense, what, what is a, and a fight against terrorists, a fight against evil people, that people blowing up buses, blowing up children is a good thing. That this is such a difficult thing to do. It should be a very basic thing to do. There should be 10,000 people here yeah. saying that this is what is what is right. But the fact is, is that somehow doing what is right is not necessarily easy. But you are all here showing that you have the courage to say that what is right is what we will do. And we will no longer be silent. We're going to speak up and say that we support Israel's right to defend themselves. We support Israel's right to stop this terrorist regime in Gaza. And we don't want to see any more missiles shot, shot at Israel. We don't want to see any more weapons brought into Gaza. We believe that all these the smuggling, all the weapons, all these ships need to be stopped because Israel has a right to defend themselves. What everyone can do here is, is that we're hopeful that this won't be the last rally that we can have another rally with a lot more people and a lot more time to put it together because we want to show people that we are not going to be silent. If they want to do a rally, we're going to do another rally and we're going to do more rallies and we're going to be out there and show them that we care about Israel and we're going to stand up for Israel and this is that Israel has a right for their, for their existence and we're there to support them. Thank you. You want to introduce, let them know who I am? Or, uh, you want to let them know who I am? Why don't you just introduce yourself? Okay, all right. Okay, and um, hello, uh, thank you, and Devin and, uh, and Farley and the rabbis. And this was not planned, so I'm going to be brief. Okay, my name is Ari, I'm from Israel. And um, I wanted to briefly broach with you the topic of self-defense. Okay, Jewish self-defense. Uh, the action against the flotilla was an action of self-defense. Okay, and uh, although Jews are often condemned for defending themselves, uh, I think uh, in many cases that is necessary. And I don't want to be alarmist, but I think most of you realize that um, this flotilla action against Israel was part of the same global jihad effort that involves terrorist organizations like Hamas, Hezbollah, and, and uh, Al-Qaeda, that is uh, coordinated from Iran and Saudi Arabia and places like that. And, uh, and you may or may not be aware that uh, this global jihad starts to is trying to open as many fronts as possible against Israel and the Jews. And uh, uh, this area here, in Arizona, in the valley, is no exception. There is a very radical Muslim network here in the valley. Okay, They have staged events. There have been several cases where ties were found to Hamas, fundraising and recruitment, Okay, here in the valley. Why am I telling you all this? To be alarmist? No. I think that uh, for all Jews who are organized in the valley in communities, it makes sense to take some basic steps, some basic precautions, uh, in the in this plan of self-defense, like if you have, if you attend a synagogue, okay, if you attend a Jewish community center, it makes sense uh, to uh, designate some people who are perhaps uh, carrying guns on a private basis. Uh, to designate them as a rapid response team. In Israel it's common practice, especially in Yishuvim, in uh, settlements where there is heightened risk, to designate some people who always carry when they come to the synagogue, who have, uh, an, uh, who have a, a telephone list where they can be reached quickly and immediately to respond to a particular area. Uh, they are always in good contact with local law enforcement. I'm not coming to diss the local law enforcement. The law enforcement here is wonderful. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll wrap it up. And um, uh, however, you know, when when in those most dangerous seconds, the police is always just minutes away. So, and this is something for your consideration. We're trying to implement this in our own community, and I think it would be a very good idea to make the basic steps in this direction without being an alarmist, but just being safe. So, thank you very much, and thank you to the organizers again. Thank you. It's getting hot. I don't want to keep everyone, but God bless you for coming here on short notice. And God bless Israel. Thank you.
Good. I'm at the rally. Military supply. And the answer to your first question as to how that can be solved, when the Arabs give up their 100-year quest to destroy Israel, it will be solved and not a day before. Israel is perceived as generally, they don't mess around when it comes to the sanctity of their state. They also are perceived as being probably one of the best trained military in the world. What do you think went wrong with the stopping of the blockade? Um, what went wrong is that they, in fact, sent the soldiers on the ship in the first place. In my, you're asking, my yeah, personal, I'm right? asking you personally, right? There was no reason to risk the lives of the soldiers. These were very vicious jihadists. Uh, when they were getting on the boat on, in Turkey, there are YouTube films of them yelling, slaughter the Jews. So these are not pacifists, at least on this boat. There are some genuine do-gooders who are misguided and think there's a humanitarian issue in Gaza. But they, these jihadists were hiding behind their skirts. Um, what Israel had to do was sink the ship. If they would have sunk the ship three years ago, the first ship, as anyone would do, as we would have done in the Cuban Missile Crisis, as we did to the Germans in World War II, as any other country would do, then this problem would be over. But that's my opinion. That's not the opinion of the government of Israel. What do you want the Phoenicians, people here in Phoenix, to realize what you're doing and what can they do? What can you do to persuade them in changing their attitude? Um, if you're seriously interested in the issue, go online, look up the IDF website, just Google the video. The videos speak from themselves. The organizers claim they were peace-loving activists and there were no weapons on board. All the weapons have been laid out. You can see them. You can see the attack. It's clear as day for anyone who's interested. So if you're really interested in the truth, the facts support Israel, and I, I, uh, I advise people to look into the facts. Don't worry. Take my word for it. Educate yourself because the facts will support Israel's cause. Thank you. Thank you, kind sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Tune in tonight for Channel 3 exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> At least of the blockade is to make sure that the weapons don't go through. Very good. And then we had a lot of people coming up and telling us what types of supporters are here. Tell us who's here. Well, it's mostly the Jewish community, but from every side of the Jewish community. This was all organized yesterday. People sent emails one to the other. There are people from Orthodox congregations, the Sephardi congregation, uh, all kinds of people, some of whom I know and some who I don't. But I'm really pleased to see that so many people showed up on such a Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.